Good evening. evening. Welcome to worship at Emmanuel. This weekend we are in the fifth and final installment of our five-part sermon series entitled The Church God Wants. We look at the perspectives of our God and learn that sometimes the attitudes and behaviors that he wants to see among his children in church are different than the ones that easily come to mind. Last week, for example, we said that the church God wants is the kind of church that says hard things when those things need to be said. At the same time, this week we're going to learn that God wants a church that does hard things. Sometimes the hardest thing to do is to offer forgiveness to someone, especially when we've been personally wrong. And yet as we look at the lessons and the readings today, God is going to demonstrate his love and forgiveness to us, which motivates us in our lives of Christian living as well. Tonight we have an opportunity to enjoy the Lord's Supper as we follow along with the order of service that you hopefully received on your way into the sanctuary. We'll begin with our opening hymn, number 733, Forgive Our Sins as We Forgive. God's richest blessings on our worship. of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment, both now and forever. 
But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. <laughs> Heavenly Father, you graciously forgive us all our sins and abundantly provide for all our needs of body and soul. Give us confidence in your mercy and teach us also to be merciful to our neighbor, that we willingly forgive all people and judging only ourselves, lead blessed lives to your glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. In each of the three lessons that serve as the foundation for worship this weekend, God gives us a picture of the importance of forgiveness being expressed among his children. The truth is, the people to whom we are the closest are the ones that can often hurt us the most. It's true of our relationships with our spouses, and 
It's true of our relationships with our siblings. We see one of those broken relationships in the first lesson from Genesis chapter 50. After being sold into slavery by his brother, Joseph demonstrates the power of forgiveness. These words also serve as the basis for this weekend's sermon. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, What if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs we did to him? So they went, they sent word to Joseph, saying, Your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of the God of your father. When their message came to him, Joseph wept. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, Don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then, don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. Let's join to sing Psalm 103. St. Paul teaches us that kindness, compassion, and forgiveness are the distinguishing marks of Christ's church. A lesson from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapters 4 and 5. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. 
Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Holy Gospel. chapter 18. Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times. Jesus answered, I tell you not seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold, billions of dollars, was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. As this, at this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins, a few thousand dollars. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, Be patient with me, and I'll pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown in prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all that he owed. This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to you, to you o Christ. Christ. Congregation may be seated. We'll join together to sing the hymn of the day, Oh, How Good It Is, is hymn 731. Please notice that the first verse will be sung by soloists. <laughs> Oh, 
consideration today is uh, taken from Genesis chapter 50, where we again read verses 18 through 21. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good, to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then, don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. This the Lord made the words of my mouth in your sight. Amen. You may be seated. Your brothers and sisters in Christ, there's uh, a few times, maybe probably many times in my life, Obnoxious. I, I can remember when I first got here. I think uh, one of my uh, first Packer games I saw sitting Lions, and uh, two uh, Lion fans were sitting right next to me, and they said that I was cheering too loud. So, I'm, uh, I, I cheer for the Packers. I sat down. No, I actually started yelling even louder. I'm going, okay, I could be more obnoxious too. And I think at the end of the game, serving a buffer between these two line fans, Lori and then myself. That was many years ago, but I've grown a lot. I haven't really been too obnoxious to other fans for quite some time, but my my annoyance button was hit. As we were there uh, tailgating with 50% Packer fans and 50% Bear fans, yelping this and that, it's a new era, you know, Rodgers is gone, you know, this is going to be a great time for the Chicago Bears, and, I and then after the first uh, two runs that they actually got, like the first down, they were just yipping in a good way, because we're rivals. Okay, I guess I'm going to be just as annoying as they are. I'd yell like Rick. Um, also, after every first down and after, or after every touchdown and every um, interception, they always say, uh, like when you watch, you know, when someone scores a goal, they go, go, and they hold it for like, 
I say store, and you hold that for 45 seconds. Whatever, and get up and say, we still own them. That's probably me too. Now, everyone, because we're just rivals and everything, and we're all friends, but again, the other things in life, between us and other people, I think we've all been through a lot of right? Did you get vaccinated or aren't you vaccinated? Did you vote for Trump or did you vote for Biden? There's just a lot of tension to do. You know, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm going to push you hard now. You push me hard, I'm going to push you hard. Today we actually uh, hear about another very obnoxious teenager. We all know him. He's Joseph. And he's also the father's favorite. There's no that. His older brothers would always be out there uh, tending the flocks of Jacob. And then Joseph go out, check out your brothers and what brothers are doing. And at one time he came back and told his father and gave Brothers. So that was a strike against Joseph. Yes, you know, you're, maybe you should do this, or how about I help him? You're kind of slacking over here. I can help him. No, he took that all back to Number one. Their annoyance button had been pushed. But then we. You know, the coat of many colors that Joseph his father, and he would uh, flaunt that off to look at me. Probably another strike to him. I, I, I think they weren't just annoyed at him, really strongly dislike him. But then, that was when he had this dream. What his dream was, and he's saying this to his brothers. Joseph had a dream. They hated him all the more. He said to them, Listen to this dream. Finding sheaves of grain out in the field, and stood upright while your sheaves down to it. His brother said to him, Do you intend to reign? Actually rule us? Because of his dream and what he these hateful hateful actions because right after his dream it says Joe And that was probably a better scenario because it said no. How about we sell him in This is kind of going and making this long account. There's a past, and, and Joseph, all Egypt, just under Pharaoh, and there's a severe battle. Brothers that were still living in Canaan had come down there to ask for grain and buy grain, and lo, that's who they are bowing down before. Joseph as their brother because all the Egyptian garb on and everything, but brothers. If Hollywood would be right in the cast, what would be the revenge? You sold me. Remember that dream, bros. Remember that. And here you are. You didn't take and says this before all his attendants, and he cried out. So there was no one with Joseph when he 
And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him. Uh, Pharaoh's household heard about it as well. Joseph said, Is my father still living? But his brothers were not able And at his presence, come close to me. When they had done so, he said, I am your brother. Do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here. Would that have been your reaction? I don't know. Maybe sometimes. But most likely not. We like to hold see that forgiveness ends the forgiveness is always a win-win and revenge if it's a win-win situation because you're with your grudge it makes it messes with your mind fully what else does forgiveness do you pardon. Thought about, yeah, I wonder if Joseph is here. He is. But then we also read from our second day. It says this get rid of all brawling and slander, along with every form of malice, compassionate to one another, forgiving each other. Gave you. You know, you see, for me, I cannot uh, remember the story. Saying he had a falling out with his son named Paco. And uh, I don't know what the, why they fell out. Finally, left, so he leaves his father, he runs away. And after a, a short time, you know, everything he did, his last step was to more or less put an ad and a headline that read this. It said this, Dear in front of the in front of this newspaper office at noon on Saturday. Your father. The next day, as it's a familiar, there's falling out with so many. What to hear was that, hey, your father loves you and all. I think that's what. is forgiven, it's great. And that are so well, are still having a hard time. I pray that you don't, but let me ask you this forgiving someone sold into slavery. Probably not, right? No, you're here. Have you ever, have you ever had your beard pulled out? Have you ever? Not at all. Listen to again, Joseph's Hold him into slavery. In the place of God, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good of many lives. So then don't and your children, and he reassured them. 
and he reassured them of their forgiveness. As he was being stoned to death, he says this, Father, forgive them. Hold the sin against them when he falls asleep. Or how about our Savior being crucified? He says the same. They do not know what they are doing. Greatly. To worship our God and greatly. Hard thing to do, but it's the thing. Well, you know, I'm sure visibly here right now, I'm sure. I don't want to let him go. Obviously, he's not. Word and sacrament. We give him a hug. Those who have wronged us. We are doing what we don't forgive. So if someone is wrong, you don't really look at them and look at your eyes on yourself. How many times we have wronged him and yet and when someone don't hold on but forgive. When you say you're and continually remind can I remember uh, seven you know I always had an over, overactive conscience and ever when he is uh, maybe professional booth was the downstairs back what is it Okay, no, you can tell me or you can tell Jesus, you know, and you can tell I think I thought this name of all my room I'm going to be think or Jesus came. He's forgiven you. That load, you know, to get, get off stop there. I didn't just say, hey, you're forgiven. I, I showed him that day. That day. His brothers too. He said they forgive him. So my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, God's forgiveness is limited limitless to others. Please stand. This is all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds everlasting. Amen. According to the words of the Nicene I believe in maker of heaven and earth In one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, light, true God, and true of one being with the Father, made for us and for our the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary. And became truly human. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day he rose. He ascended to heaven. And in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will Who in unity with the Father and the prophets, we believe in the Church, we acknowledge the sins, we look for the life of the world to come. You created the universe that we live. You control who sits at your right hand in glory. As we pray that you would comfort us with the promise of your eternal presence. Our hearts and minds. Clear away our confusion. to strengthen both our confidence in your promises and hear us as we pray of sinning and restore us each day by your grace. Time is near. Protect us from scoffers who sneer at your truth. Hatred and persecution. Hear us as we pray that you would bear crosses with patience and joy. Fill in the hearts of our children a desire to follow you as they pray. Help them to distinguish between eternal, between instant thrills and lasting joy. For young people to prepare for service and and mold us and to our youth. Those who are experiencing physical or emotional pain, disease or facing death, compassion on those who grieve and comfort those who mourn. At all times, Lord, move us and to help them when we can. Finally, Lord, we pray alone. You have promised. Give us patience to accept your blessings in whatever way that you see. Wisdom, prepare us for the day. Hear us for Jesus. As we gather the offering, I'll encourage you to file the offering basket. If you're visiting us tonight, fill find in the seat back in front of you. If you're a member of our congregation, stay in touch with you throughout the week to come.
continues with the celebration of the sacrament on page 17. Please stand. The Lord, lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our It is truly good and right that we should give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, Lord, who promised that wherever two or three come together in his name, shepherd his flock until he comes again in glory. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and joy. from all people. You created the world and all who live in it, and in your mercy you saved us. We give thanks to you for the grace of Though in very nature God, he took the nature of a servant and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. He offered himself as a sacrifice for curse and penalty. He rescued us from the terrors of death and restored eternal life with you. He conquered our enemies and gained for us the glory. Bless us as we receive your Son's body and blood, and lead us to remember his suffering, death, and resurrection. Forgive our sins of new life in heaven. Hear our praise and receive our thanks as we worship you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given Thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples. It's my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
this true body and blood strengthen you and keep you in the one true faith until life everlasting, you are at peace with God. Amen. Please stand. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, We give you thanks, O Lord, for the foretaste of the heavenly banquet that you've given us in this sacrament. Through this gift, you have fed our faith, nourished our hope, and strengthened our love. By your Spirit, help us to live as your holy people until that day when you will receive us as your guests at the wedding supper of the Lamb, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated. Once again, so very glad to see so many in God's house on another beautiful weekend. Thanks to Pastor Schultz for bringing us God's word to our musicians for lending their talents as well. A number of great things going on throughout the month of September and into October, and you can stay aware of them in the yellow pages. This includes some Bible classes that are starting up for men, for women, for all sorts of folks, um, even opportunities for a new book club that's starting up well, with Dr. Don Furman that you can take note of. One Bible class I'd really want to draw your attention to is called Foundations of the Christian Faith. It's our starting point class, our BIC class sometimes it's called. It's how to get a handle on the truths of God's Word that are really the foundations of everything we believe and teach here at Emmanuel. You can enroll in that class really easily. It's in Sunday mornings in between our two services at 9.15. It meets down in the church basement. Grab yourself a cup of coffee and enjoy a, a dialogue about God's Word. It's also offered on Wednesday evenings at 5.30. So you can come in the middle of the week or you can come and bring a friend. Um, a great chance to invite someone perhaps and say, I'd love you to, to come to this course with me, learn a little bit more about my church teaches, or I'd love to just sit with you and study God's Word together as a friend. So those are opportunities. You can take a look at those. I don't think there are any other announcements that I forgot about or missed. God's richest blessings to all of you throughout the week that's coming. As you make your way out of God's house, take a moment to greet someone nearby you. Thank you. 